Hey, Scribe Tribe. So last week I, t I told you and showed you my new chalkboard wall in the office. And this week I managed to carve out a little bit of time uh, to do some doodling on that chalkboard. So I set up uh, the camera in the corner of the room and just recorded a bit of a time lapse of me playing around there. Um, and I thought I would share that with you here. Uh, well, I gave you a bit of an update on uh, what's on my desk this week, what I'm working on, what I'm thinking about, all of those sorts of things. So jumping straight in, um, I have a mix of projects on my desk this week. Uh, some uh, larger projects near completion, some larger ones just kicking off, uh, some ongoing pieces with ongoing clients, um, and then a couple of new things that are just in the very early stages. So I've got a really kind of broad spread um, of projects at different stages at the moment, which I quite like. It means that not everything is at the same place. Um, some things are still being very much drafted and concepted, while others I'm right in the depths of the detail of, and, and then others again are coming towards an end. So it's nice to have things um, all in different places, using different skill sets, different parts of the brain, that sort of thing. Uh, so this week I have been thinking a lot about how I better balance the need for in the business and on the business. As you can just see here in the video, just jumping back there, my husband <laughs> made a quick appearance. Hey Ben, he was just showing me um, all of the veggies he just picked out of our veggie garden that morning. Um, and back to the picture. So yeah, in the business, on the business is something, It's if you're a, an entrepreneur, small business owner, it's something you constantly have to be managing because you need to be able to get into the business flow to really focus in on a client's need and uh, deliver quality for them. You also have to carve out space for working on your business. So you get a chance to step out, be reflective about what's working, what's not working, change processes, change uh, tools, um, providers even of services, whatever it might be so that you are constantly getting better at doing what you do. And I think this is one of the struggles I try to be really mindful of um, at all times in my business is making sure I create the right space, the right amount of time and environment to allow for both types of thinking um, and both types of effort. And that one uh, should never compromise your ability to deliver on the other. So... Uh, that's something I've been thinking about today um, uh, and throughout all of the week while I just look at how I can make some things better and where I can make improvements. Um, also, another thing I've had to ponder a bit this week, there's been a couple of conversations with clients where we've really had to break down uh, analog versus digital um, in terms of my approach specifically to live scribing in these instances. So... For those of you that have been following my work for a long time, you would know that in the pre-COVID world, almost all of the live scribing graphic recording that I did was pen on paper. I was pretty old school. I would rock up with a big roll of paper or a phone call board and my marker pens and, and create something that way. Uh, when we all had to uh, you know, go into lockdown and get used to working from home and still needing to collaborate, even though every single person was in a different location, digital really moved to the forefront. So I found myself scribing more and more on my iPad and sharing my drawing screen into Zoom meetings and, and other video conferencing platforms. Now we have this kind of hybrid situation which means we have to put a little bit more thought into what's going to work and why. So I thought I would share some of that thinking with you this week because it could be relevant for your work as well. So in my way of thinking, analog, when it's pen on paper, the real benefits of that are the tactile experience. When you're drawing a big picture in a room with people, they can come up and touch it um, and interact with it and pick up a pen and just feel like they have this physical connection to the picture. And 
that's something that you just cannot replicate digitally. It's just not the same. Something about touching the picture makes a difference. Having said that, however, if you have a hybrid audience and some of them are in the room and able to touch the picture and some of them are online, well, you can alienate those people that don't have the same opportunity. So in that instance, it's, it's not a great option. Um, so the place then, if you've got that hybrid crowd, is generally to go digital. So how then do you make a digital experience work for the people in the room? So I find that being able to share my drawing um, as it's progressing onto a big screen is beneficial, but it needs to be able to sit alongside PowerPoint presentations or facilitator notes. It can't dominate. It has to work with those things. So you have to have the right tech set up to enable a digital scribe to sit comfortably alongside uh, the other visual components. So one great thing with the, the software that I use for my digital scribing is the ability to uh, hit playback on the video, which means that I can be sitting in the room digitally scribing, not sharing um, constantly, but that at key points in the agenda, I can share my screen up, hit playback, and you can watch my page redraw. Um, and that's just, they're nice kind of punctuation points throughout a session that is digital. So that's one of the real advantages for digital. The other plug that it gets, I think, is uh, your ability to, especially if it's in a workshop environment and you're not just looking for a straight capture of the conversation that took place, but you're trying to create something collaboratively, then digital gets another point there as well because uh, you can edit much more easily when you've created something digital. You can change the sizing of something, move it on the page, group it with something else, erase it, change a word, all of those sorts of things that pen and paper just don't allow you to do. Uh, but then on the pen and paper side, uh, the artifact you're left with at the end is large scale paper format they can be quite impressive in their presence because of their size. So you have this great artifact that can then go and be displayed in a workplace, um, which is fabulous. Um, they can equally be scanned in and a digital version created. So you don't miss out on that ability, but you do have this big, uh, beautiful piece of artwork to put on display. And you're much more inclined to display it if it was made that way. Uh, than you are to print out something that was done digitally. Um, so that's kind of one of the, the other pluses that I've seen. So there's no right or wrong answer is basically what I'm saying. And in this uh, new uh, hybrid world, um, I've just had to learn to be um, flexible and adaptable and to work through this conversation with each new client, each new project and determine the best way forward based on that agenda, those people, what you want to do with it afterwards, all of those sorts of things. Um, because there's plenty of ways to make both digital and analog work from a live scribing perspective. So that's just another one of the things that I've been um, pondering and exploring uh, this week. So coming up from here, as you can see, I'm, I'm nearly finished this, uh, this picture. There's a bit more that goes into it. Um, I'm hoping in coming weeks, I'll be able to show you the entire chalkboard full of, full of doodles. Um, so that's something I'll be finding time to do. Um, I have upcoming a face-to-face -face live scribe, which is exciting. They used to be very regular and now they're, uh, an exciting rarity, so I'm very much looking forward to that. I'm also in the midst of creating a set of posters uh, for some uh, PhD presenters that are each showcasing their work at a one day forum. And I'm building a set of posters uh, to represent each of those speakers. And that's been a really fun project that I've had this week as I've uh, worked through interviewing each of them, getting to know who they are, what they're passionate about, their background, what's driven them to be doing the doctorate that they are doing. Uh, it's been a really 
lovely uh, human project to immerse in. So I can't wait to see those come to life on my desk over the next few days. Uh, in addition, I am still working through uh, some scribe videos and uh, getting some course stuff um, together. So we're going to kick off visual language for business in the not too distant future. So I'm getting uh, materials ready for that. I'm also uh, piloting, it's very much a prototype, um, but a new offering that I'm going to be able to put out there for you guys that is a co-design piece. So it's not purely training, but it's not me producing an output for you either. It's where I walk you through the skills necessary to build your own uh, artifact. So more on that coming soon. So here we go. I'm just giving you a little video tour of some of my doodling efforts on the chalkboard. So much fun. But I do have to confess that even after I did this video, this little uh, walkthrough video, I still couldn't stop there. So even what I'm showing you here, I did a little bit more. Um, so I'm just going to flick a picture up in a second to show you that because then I've just felt like the whiteboard on the door was lonely. So it, it needed a little something as well. So I went back then and, and dug out the whiteboard markers. There we go. So I could just connect the two as well. So there we go. Chalkboard update. What's on my desk update? Some things that I've been thinking about. As always, lovely to hang out with you, Scribe Tribe. Please hit like. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And share this video with a friend who you think might enjoy it.